have a motion to come out of the executive session. Second. We have a motion. We, have a we do have a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, we are out of executive session, which lasted a little over an hour and 40 minutes for personnel. We'll resume the meeting. Uh, we will start off with comments from residents on agenda items. Do we have any um, no residents comments. that sign up in advance? No. No. One no. Do we have any up. residents that would like to address the board on agenda items only? Seeing none, we'll move on to Section B, Bills and Financial Reports. Mr. Shaw. Uh, we will have for the regular board meeting the uh, previously approved and uh, list of bills for July 2016. We will have those listed so they are formally recognized in the minutes. Those were previously approved by the board, reviewed. Uh, we will also have the current list of bills for the month of August 2016. In addition, we will have also our monthly financial statements for June and July of 2016. We will have those available uh, at, the, at the next meeting. Uh, what we do have this evening, we actually have um, Chris Shelby and Randy Frederick uh, from the district's bond underwriting firm of Piper Jaffrey. Uh, they would like to briefly uh, review some options in regards to the district's currently outstanding series, 2007 series of uh, general obligation bonds. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. Shelby, you have the floor, please. Chris Shelby with Piper Jaffrey. Uh, we have uh, acted on behalf of the school district and on your last bond issue as well uh, in terms of refunding of some of your debt. And the reason we're here tonight is to briefly discuss you, uh, with you and bring you up to date as to um, where the market is with regard to one of your one of your two outstanding bond issues and what the results would be if you uh, wanted to refinance that bond. Just and really think. it generates significant savings for the district. Uh, you all have a handout, and I'm going to go through this fairly briefly. And I hope, you know, don't take it as if everything here isn't very pertinent, but at the same time, I, I, I don't want to dwell on things that are, you know, you've had a long night already, I know. Um, and if you go to the book that we handed out, just page one, and I'm going to go through this very quickly. This is just your existing debt. And you have two issues outstanding. So this is just to give some perspective to what we're talking about. You have a 2000, on page two, you, it shows a 2007 uh, bond issue on the left side. And that's the debt service remaining. You can see it's, uh, you have debt service remaining on that from uh, uh, 2017 to 2028. And that is the issue that we're going to be dealing with tonight and giving you some results on. You also have a 2012 bond issue outstanding, and this is a bond issue that we did refund for you in the year 2012, and that is the net debt service that is due and remaining on that bond issue. And when we say net debt service, we're talking about your share of debt service after you've received your state subsidy. So we net it out to show you what your actual local effort obligation is. So those are your two bond issues outstanding. The one we're de dealing with tonight is the 2007 bond issue. So. The next uh, two page three is, is just a look at the 2012 debt service. You don't have to look at that. Uh, page four is the 2007 bond issue. Again, this is your bond issue. Uh, and just to put a structure and perspective in place, you can see, again, it's payable between now and the year 2028. We show principal, that's your amortization of principal, your interest, and that's your, the interest on the loan. And then we have that yellow uh, highlighted reimbursement. That is the effective rate that the state pays you for every dollar of debt service on this bond issue, meaning when you pay a dollar of debt service, the state sends back to you 22 cents for each dollar that you pay. We take that into account. That column is your reimbursement back from the state, and that's how we get to a net debt service. So this is a, you can see at the bottom of that page, it says callable 715 2017. That means that this bond can be called in from the market, and you have that right to pull in all of these bonds from the existing bondholders on uh, uh, July 15th of 2017. And you pull it in from them uh, that you can demand it back and terminate their ownership of the bonds as long as you can pay them for the, the bonds. There's no penalty for that. Uh, you can see when we say uh, callable in 17 at 100, that means 100 means par or no penalty. You're paying exactly the full price for, for, the, for, that, uh, for that bond. Um, so the first thing we want to look at on page five, 
I have to tell you, because the 07 bond issue was an advance refunding itself, under federal law, you're only allowed one advance refunding for a bond issue using tax exempt rates. That means that you couldn't refund this issue right now in advance of that call date because it's 2016, the call date's July 17. You couldn't refund it now in advance of that day using uh, tax-free bonds uh, because you used your one advanced refunding. So, but right now we're in an interest rate environment where taxable rates are probably lower across the board than tax-free rates used to be. That's how low interest rates are. And with that, taxable rates now do work. If you're using taxable rates, you're allowed to do this refunding at any time that you deem you want to do it. That's why we're using taxable rates here, because it gives you this option to do this bond issue right now, which you would not have if you were only looking at tax exempt rates. You'd have to wait till next July. And the reason that the reason this is even here and why we're discussing it tonight is because by waiting, of course, between this July and next July, we don't know where interest rates are going to be. Easily interest rates could be the same as they are now. Tax-free rates could be even higher than taxable rates are right now, a year from now. You just don't know. And we're not trying to scare anyone into a decision. This is the bird in hand, and that's why we, it's worth looking at. There are a lot of issuers across the country now, obviously, looking at taxable refundings because they've been denied that second advance refunding using, using tax-exempt rates. So with this, page six, quickly, in order to call in all of those 2007 bonds, and by call in, that means you're rid of that bond issue. It's gone, and you're going to replace it. And whenever we talk about replacing a new bond issue with an, for an old bond issue, we're talking about identical debt service or lower debt service. In other words, we're going to, we're going to have a new payment period that matches, literally matches your existing payment period. We're not extending it. We're not shortening it nor are we raising the annual net debt service. So even after a recalculation is done for effective reimbursement from the state, we make sure that your annual debt service is identical to what it is now on a net local basis. And also we make sure that the last payment is the same last payment that you currently have. So you aren't extending debt or doing anything, no smoke and mirrors, nothing. It's very simple. And again, think of it again like your own home mortgage. If you went into the bank and said, I got 21 years left on my mortgage, I am at 5%, you say you can give it to me at 3% now, that's great, I want the same period of time left on my mortgage, and you have a choice. Give me the cash I need for my new kitchen, how much can I get out of it because of the interest rate savings, keeping my payments the same, or lower my payments and lower them over the same period of time. So those are what the options we're looking at. The first option here would be your cash out. And on page six, the highlighted number, if you were to do this refunding, your net cash out is $1,286,000. That would be cash that the district would have in hand at the closing of this bond issue. Chris, yes. can I interrupt just for sure. a second? So uh, the net debt service on page four is Right. Dollars and ninety-five cents, mm -hmm. and it says bond proceeds at par twenty million one fifty. Mm -hmm. yeah, am I comparing this, the correct uh, set of two two set of numbers? No. Okay. So help so, me. And I will have that comparison you're looking for in the next okay. probably two pages. All right. But no. Okay. Um, okay. So you have one million two eighty-six, and this takes into account, as you can see, that just to go down the uses real quickly, you see eighteen million six hundred thirty-eight thousand. That is the net deposit that is required. It's invested in U.S. Treasuries issued specifically by the Federal Treasury for refunding purposes. You will have U.S. direct obligations in an irrevocable escrow, and that will be exactly sufficient to not only to pay both interest and principal on all the bonds that you are refunding, and that will be callable on 7-15-2017. And on that date, that entire account, that refunding escrow will come due, if you will, and all that cash will, on that date, call in all the existing bonds. So you have cleaned that obligation out by creating this escrow. It's called a legal defeasance. And with that now, your new obligation will be the new bond issue and its replacement. We have delivery date expenses. These are estimated costs of issuance, so I won't go through them in detail, but their typical cost of issuance as related to your rating, your, your legal, your, your bond underwriting, 
all the printing, all the normal, normal established fees. But after that's all said and done, the 1,286 is where you stand today. And that represents a 7.22% savings. That 7.22% is a percent of the par amount of bonds that you're refunding. And that's how percent of savings is calculated. The old benchmark used to be if you don't get 2%, don't do the deal. Now we're in big numbers because of where interest rates are. 7% is a significantly high savings as a, as a percent of the par amount of bonds that you're refunding. The next page just shows, and we can go, uh, the prior debt service. Again, uh, uh, Steve, that was kind of back to where you, the, another schedule. Uh, well, it's a duplication of the schedule you're referencing. And then the next page on page eight is the debt service schedule for the new bond issue. And, and again, you can see the reimbursement column and everything else. Uh, so the next page tells the real story here. And on page nine, that is comparing your old net debt service column from the 2007 bonds to the new net debt service column, the 2016 bonds. You can see, first of all, they're over exactly the same period of time. Secondly, you can see every year is virtually identical. And in truth, the total difference in new debt, net debt service to old, you're actually to benefit to yourself of $3,600. This is only to prove that you haven't done anything fancy to your debt service. You've left your net local effort identical and you've extracted, extracted the cash, the $1,200,000. So, that's one option, and if you turn to page 10, and then, and then Chris, oh, please do, yeah. Sorry, because I have something for you. Okay. Uh, essentially what he's saying is all the payments will be the same. We're going to float an additional $3 million in bonds, and then the district would receive approximately $1.2, $1.3 million right. cash in hand. So you'd be floating an additional $3 million, whereas our debt service would be identical. Why do we want that, the cash instead of taking a lower payment? Well, that's, that's what option two is. Yeah. That, that's where I'm leaning as well, but he'll go into option two. Okay. Thank you, Chris. That's where we are. Um, so if you go to page 10, this is adding all of your existing debt service together. Um, we aren't going to refund your 2017 bonds uh, because uh, it doesn't make sense. It loses you money. So we don't refund bonds that can't be called in in advance of their due date. So you'll continue that payment, but we add it in for those bonds that we don't think should be refunded in 07. Then you have the 2012 net debt service, you have the new 2016 net debt service, and then you have the new proposed aggregate debt service. So that proposed aggregate is your new combined column. And if you look at it side by side with the far right column existing aggregate, that's where you are today before this happens. And you can see line by line, year by year, everything is exactly the same and the totals at the bottom are within $3,000, $4,000 of each other. So um, actually you see it's a slight reduction even in the new net aggregate versus the old net aggregate. So that's the cash at closing. And I'll just add one other little caveat. If you take the cash at closing, that one million two, whatever that number is, you must use it for capital purposes. It can't just go into, it doesn't go into the general fund, it doesn't go into operations. How long do you have to use it? You have, you have to expend it, uh, you have to have reasonable expectation for its, its expenditure within three years from the date of receipt. So you would have to have projects, basically some idea of projects that you would want to spend that money on, okay? But that is a caveat attached to taking cash at closing uh, because it becomes tax, or, or it becomes one proceeds and therefore it has to be expended. Um, the, okay, we're going into the next thing. And this uh, next thing on page 11, the next option, advanced refunding, everything's the same, still a taxable bond issue, but this is instead of taking the cash and closing, creating a debt service reduction and taking advantage of the savings in terms of reducing your net debt service instead of taking the cash out at the, at, at the closing of the bond issue. So on page 12, I, I, I won't go through it. It's, it's, pretty, it's gonna be a similar bond issue, but you can see there's no cash we don't have that asterisk with savings, net cash closing. That additional proceeds of $1,300 is just a rounding factor. It has nothing to do uh, with cash at closing. So you don't get any essentially cash at closing. So we move on to page 13, and we're kind of jumping ahead here, but this will save a little bit of time. You have your prior debt service, again, the exact prior debt service uh, due on the uh, 2007 bonds in the prior debt service column, the second one in from the left. And then right beside that, you have the refunding debt service. 
but now instead of taking it cash it's closing what we've done is we have tried to uh, have the school district realize the savings as quickly as it can be structurally possible through the bond issue and those three highlighted column or the three highlighted numbers under annual savings you can see those are reductions in your debt service but this chart is your gross reduction in other words you can see it's a big number a million one million six hundred ninety three thousand the state hasn't gotten their share of this yet so that is the reduction generated by the bond issue but now the state because they've been reimbursing you at effectively 22 percent they're going to take 22 percent of each of those reductions in other words because your debt service went down by that amount so did theirs so their 22 percent of their share of debt service they won't be reimbursing on because it doesn't exist you've reduced their obligation and we'll show you what that result is if we go through page 14 uh, that's a prior bond debt service again just like we did before and page 15 is the new bond debt service so let's go to page 16 and that shows you those two pages just aggregated and you can see what the net difference is now you can see you've gone from the the gross savings of one million six the state's got their share now we've adjusted for it and your net annual reduction uh, would be under the difference column uh, 200 and this is as quickly as it can be extracted from the bond issue because it can only be extracted structurally based on amortization based on the principal that's being paid you can't base it on you can't eliminate interest because the loan has interest but you can move or eliminate principal so in this case you'd have a $256,000 reduction for this upcoming 16 17 year then you'd have about 326 for the 17 18 year and the last payment uh, reduction because that's when your principal is largest in the in, in the bond issue is in the 18 19 year and these are structural reductions these could be absolute if you did it this way it's going to happen in other words you can absolutely put it into your budget picture and Paul would know this is the way it is and I can count on it this is a fixed schedule there's no moving interest rates here or anything moving after the bond issues close so the net reduction you can see it goes up a little bit to a million three twenty one because just like a lottery if you're going to take it over time it goes up a little bit if you take it all day one it goes down a little bit based on present value um, the last the last sheet uh, page 17 basically 56 million uh, those two highlighted numbers 56 million 788 would be your new net all-in obligation and you can see your existing net obligation remains at 58,109. If you subtract 56,7 from 58,109, you'll see that difference uh, in the debt service reductions. The last thing I'll do, and then be on our way, just so you have a perspective here. On page 19, this is what we call the bond buyer index. It's the Dow Jones of the municipal bond market. And it's just to give you an indication of where rates are today. This is why we're here. This is historically out of sight in terms of where rates are and we highlighted that last one because it's recorded weekly it's a it's an index from the market nobody makes this up it's a it's an index that we live by and it tells us what an average 20-year rate is on a bond in the municipal market nationwide and you can see the last this past week it was a 285 and if you look at the bottom where you see the highs and lows for historical highs and lows if you just go back three years to 2000 12 you'll see the 3.27 is the lowest we ever had until now and that's where we are and that's why taxable rates are as they're really stronger than what muni rates used to be and so that again is the burden hand this is the burden hand it can be done now it doesn't have to be done now uh, if you wait and try to get to the ta tax exempt thing nobody could say you're necessarily right or wrong about that because you know you hope interest rates will be okay if they may not be you know this can be done right now so that completes Chris, a couple of quick questions mm -hmm. uh, number one the the bond issuance um, who issues that uh, ins excuse me insurance who issues that that would be put out for bid there are two major insurers one's called build American mutual the others assured guarantee and they are two double-a rated issuers we don't think you're going to need insurance we have gone over and with Paul looked at your last Moody's report you are one strong credit district and we think that you're going to uphold your double-a rating and we, we do believe that um, and with that the insurance premium goes away so what happens if the you don't even pay it premium goes away it gets built if it back goes away in, that's, that's your savings that's more mm -hmm. okay. we used it just to be conservative the cost of issuance is that the cost to your company no that's the cost of 
oh, well, the bond underwriting costs, uh, delivery legal, date expenses, you have bond council, uh, you have uh, printing, paying agent, uh, you know, all, a rating, okay. a rating fee. How much does uh, your company make on it? That we haven't even, we haven't, we were, I can't remember where we were last time, but it was around five to six dollars a bond, I believe. Five to six, six dollars, dollars per thousand. Per thousand. Mm -hmm. So ball yard that for me. You're quicker in the math. Than uh, I well, it'd be um, about 108 thousand dollars. So that that's, it, I, that's a, is that part of the cost of issuance? That's then? included in there. Okay, oh, yeah. and then who, everything's included. We, we try to be so. Sure. Who? Um, I, we've dealt before. At least I, I have, and maybe a couple of other people on board have. Scotty has as well. Um, and then one final uh, piece, um, who gets the legal work on this? That is up to you, the board, to decide. I'm sure Bruce would assist in any, any way to... Didn't we do this before? You have bond counsel and you have your solicitors. Yeah, so you have didn't we, you, did you recommend somebody before on the... Yes. On, yeah, who was it? Do you remember? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so when we when we get to that point, we make that decision then. Okay, that's fine. I think I understand what you're doing. Thanks. So, I guess from the board perspective, does anyone have any questions? Do, do they understand what those two options are? So one is we would get approximately 1.3 million dollars in hand, and we would float an additional three million in bonds. The second option is we would actually our budget would decrease by 300,000, 400,000, and 700,000 respectively, um, and we would actually decrease uh, our, our bonds. Do you have a question for Mr. Shot? Do you have any questions for him? <laughs> if I could add one thing. Oh, Paul, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I, oh, no, no, no. Just, just as an addition. We, we've all, okay, getting underway for a bond issue like this, he putting some documents together, which we have been through with Paul in the past, and it's a, it's a process. It's a, it's a three to four week process. You get the documents prepared, and that the last thing you do before you go to the rating agencies is take another look and reconsideration and gives the whole board a month to think about how they want to shape this thing. Uh, if you want to take the savings half as a debt service reduction and the other half is cash, all of it is cash, all of it is debt service reduction. You have all those options. It's totally flexible. But with that, we can do the document process now. We've worked with Bruce and the council. He, he's recommended, and, and certainly with Paul, in getting everything ready so that you are not behind, you know, you, you aren't, uh, say, a month from now coming to a conclusion and saying, now let's go, knowing now we have another month to go before we can even make that decision. Is there a period, is there a point at which you lock the rate in? Yeah, but what we suggest, and well, what we are offering, or yeah. what we suggest for the board to consider, if you'd like, is that we can begin that document preparation and have it ready probably within 30 days, and a lot of that's on Paul's shoulders. But nonetheless, uh, it, 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 it could be done. Then the only cost you would incur if you decide at that point to move forward, because you've incurred no cost to that point, not from us and not from council, the only cost you would incur is going to the rating agency. The rating agency is going to make you pay whether you do a bond issue or not. But if the market changed substantially in 30 days when we have the documents done and it isn't economical to do it, you stop the process, there's no cost to the district. If it's still cost the way you want it and you can you ha have it decided, then you say, okay, we accept uh, going into the rating process, it'll be around, I don't know, $15,000. So, so when do you lock the rate? Okay, so after we get the rating, yeah. then we would, and that takes about 10 days from the day you say, okay, let's get the rating, everything looks like a go, we want to do it. Right. It's about 10 days more. So we got 20, 30 days for Paul, then we yeah. got another 10 days for the rating, then we go to market within probably seven days of that. That is when the rates are locked. Okay, so that at that point, then you come back to the board and say, "Okay, here's, just here's, for giggles and kicks, it's two point right. eight five. And that wouldn't happen without the board already having set a minimum for savings, right? So okay. that you aren't just going to have us come back and say, "Well, guys, here's what you got." And so you're going to there will be a minimum that has to be met, or a bond issue can't be done. So if we were to take the reduction in operating costs or the reduction in the payment, is that restricted in any way? Mm -hmm. As okay. Mm -mm. No, and you have as much to think about on that during our process, process document time as you need. Question for Bruce, Paul, Chris, you know, whoever could answer. What, other than that um, 
fee to have the Moody, Serenpour, whatever agency we use to rate us. That's the only fee associated with deciding to move forward, correct? Right. That would be only, the only fee you would incur that even if you chose not to do the bond issue, you would still have to pay it. And give or take just a put in layman, it'll take about four weeks to go through that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From start to finish. It'll for that take process. three to four weeks typically. So would it be advantageous, Paul, I guess you would be the guy to turn to, um, to begin that process? You know, if we look back four weeks, what? actually identical at 2.85, but if you look back at an additional four weeks, you're at 3.26, which is quite a difference. Yeah, I would think we'd want to at least you know, stage this and get you know, the approvals, proper approvals for that. And there is some advertising that, that goes along with this as well. Um, and I think there's one or two approvals along the way that we would do for that. But definitely to at least start the process to be ready to, to make a decision to, to actually refinance, we would want to start that process fairly soon. What would we? So, so then a motion would be in, as you did the last time, you a motion would be in order to uh, approve, uh, affirm to go forward with the uh, preparing of the documents and getting you to the point where you can make a more intelligent decision. So that kind of motion to hire Piper Jaffrey to do that at no cost. And again, I want to say that it's at no cost. I just. Uh, it's in order. Okay, so uh, um, just so the public knows, um, these, these uh, rates are not subject to bidding or anything. The, these are standard rates. Any firm issuing the, re, the, the bond would, would, would go to the same source for, for the rate structure, correct? Right. Okay. We, we hope we do the best okay. job around. But um, your, okay. the market is the market. Right. And the cost of issuance and the bond insurance, um, are we... Are we talking about significant variables if we went out to another bond firm? No, you'll get no variable with bond insurance okay, because that will go to the two bidders regardless of who submits. All right, so the only, the only variable number in here is the 165. Part of that's printing, part of that's legal, yeah. and part of it's your fee. And it's probably pretty reasonable. You okay. Do um, uh, you want to frame that motion for me? Yeah. Well, I guess well, yeah. before, just to put it all, Paul, would, would you, I know and you and I have talked about this, sure. but for the rest of the board, would you recommend and I guess we have two options. I, I personally like option B, where we lower the debt service. But would you want to speak to that and sure. make a in, recommendation? In, in terms of looking at the, the two options available, I do have to say that I am. I would recommend to the board to consider option B, which is reducing our debt service and freeing up future debt service uh, payments in our budget. That gives us the maximum amount of flexibility between the, the, the two plans, as opposed to taking in cash up front, as opposed to cash spread over a period of time in terms of reducing it. What we can actually do is almost essentially the same thing. Again, if the board would decide to do that, if, you know, projects, you, and what you could basically do is say, okay, we're gonna just to give you an idea. Currently, our, our debt service is approximately $4 million gross prior to state reimbursement, which we know we're still waiting for, you know, from our most recent fiscal year. So let's just say even just using the one number that was in there, we reduce it for 17, 18 by 300,000. That's 300,000 that could potentially move to capital reserve fund. Right. Yeah. It could be utilized for, yeah. say, new technology for a district. Right. It could be utilized for anything throughout the district. Yeah. Our, our hands aren't tied like we are with cash out or, hey, the clock's running. You've got three years from the time you receive the cash to spend it on so capital right. so Your recommendation yeah. would be option, option, option B. B. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, Bruce, do you, want to fr do you want to frame that for me? If, if, there, is no, if there is no other discussion at this point, then you would suggest that if the motion should be to instruct uh, Piper Jeffrey to move forward with the necessary documentation to put you in a place where you can uh, possibly float this bond issue and use the proceeds towards reducing your debt service. Okay, so I'll move that, uh, that, that the board uh, enter into an agreement with Piper Jaffrey to um, uh, refinance the bonds as stated here at this meeting. Uh, exercising option B at no cost, now, second. At no cost to the so right to the board by Steve, second by Neil. do we have any questions or comments from the board on that yeah. it seems to me that the board is about to evaluate what's going to happen in the upcoming election with respect to the way the finances are going to occur over the next couple years so when the election occurs, we're right now at an historic high with the stock market, an historic low with respect to the bond market. So if we think things are going to get much, much better, we can wait. 
if we think they're going to stay the same, a study's uh, proper. If we think things could get worse, we're making insurance for ourselves to try to prepare a set of documents so that we can move on them. Well, I, I would just interject one thing there. Um, I agree, but hopefully this is, is done way before the election in, I'm just saying. in November. So. And secondly, uh, the two point is as low as. It, it, I mean, it may go lower, but not much. Uh, yeah. far, but I, not much. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You make that statement, it's historical. Well, how far None of it's that's a crystal good. ball in yeah. all history. All of history. We're not talking about that's not just the last 10 years. That's, so that's why I'm saying I think it's, it's like prudent. Good. I think it's prudent for the board to make this request. Okay. So I'm in favor. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from the board? Okay, I would just say I, I completely agree with Paul, with Chris, um, that we should do this. Um, I think the board's doing a great job. If we can balance a budget, no tax increase, no utilization of uh, general fund, and lower our debt service by $3 million, it's uh, pretty good. Um, so we have a motion, we have a second. Can we do a roll call, Bonnie, please? Mrs. Cerucci? Aye. Mr. Lapsevich? Aye. Mr. Nola? Aye. Mr. O'Donnell? Aye. Mr. Ritter? Big aye. Mr. Steubenborg? Aye. Mrs. Warning? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mrs. Byrne? Aye. All right. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. We'll get started tomorrow, Paul. Good. Paul <laughs> <laughs> <All> loves <laughs> We actually have a large piece of the work that's done because one, one of the things we have been doing, and again, this goes back to when we um, voluntarily um, disclosed the SEC, future, in future years when we were going from bond issue to bond issue, we weren't preparing annually all the documents that right. we were required to do. We have been doing that for the last several years, um, amongst another of other items. So for instance, one of the things, just as an example, we have to list your top 10 taxpayers. You know, that's just been filed as of last December. That has not changed. So we're, right. we're already where we need to be. With this process could move very quickly yes, because of that. Yes. And I can't tell you, I, that's really meaningful. Continuing disclosure is huge now for municipal issuers. Yep. And Paul has just knocked the lights out in terms of that because you can't imagine the failures to uh, comply with that nationally everywhere. with municipal issuers everywhere. It's a nightmare. You guys are in fantastic shape with that. That's Thanks, really Mr. Shaw. Big. Can I just ask <laughs> one second? Hey. One yes. question. There was no pen in these folders. Did you forget them? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Where are the pens? <laughs> yeah. He, he <laughs> did. That's Randy Frederick. They're very nice pen folders, man. but oh, you man. know that you Thank you very much, Mr. Okay. Shaw. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to Section C. We do not have any items previously tabled. Section D, we have both an action item and a non-action. So we will start with the action um, personnel agenda. Mrs. Crump, please. Thank you, Mr. Super, for the Board School Directors acceptance of the personnel agenda item one as listed in Section D of the study session meeting Tuesday, August 2nd. Under first, under employment, we have listed our school police officers. Mr. Kelly, Mr. Pulaski, and Mr. Scoop. Under temporary teaching positions, these are our long-term subs that we would like to get in place. And we also have a semester teaching position. You want a motion on that now? Yes. Uh, so moved. Second. A motion by Steve, second by Neil. Again, this is going to be an action item for this evening. Does anyone have any questions or comments? I do. Um, were there any current law enforcement professionals that interviewed the school police officers? So whenever you interviewed for Brian Key and Jonathan Pulowski and Timothy Scoop, were there current law enforcement professionals that did the interviewing, like current law no. enforcement, excuse no. me, supervisors? Okay. No, the goal of the board was to hire a head of security, and the head of security would then choose the rest of the security staff. So Mrs. Crump, um, Mr. Short, Mr. Murphy, Mr. Mateo. Mr. Mateo set up first round interviews with all of the candidates and identified the top three based on their experience um, and then called in second interviews with those three with the security committee, president, the school board, uh, principal, and we had the second round interviews with those three individuals. And that so. would also add, um, between those two meetings, uh, a lot of law enforcement were reached out to um, as far as um, references and, and calling right. to 
gather I know that I, those three individuals. I personally, I mean, I think a lot of us on the board do our own reference checks. So I wouldn't say that there was people present, but I would say that these people were thoroughly vetted through the contacts that the board members on the staff, including myself, including Mr. Steubenport, have with current state troopers, with current Monroeville police officers. Um, Chad, you want to add anything to that? No, I think they were heavily vetted. Um, I think administration did a great job um, sending us the, those three as recommendations. Um, and I guess the only thing I would just touch on, just to inform the public, um, to go through very quickly, um, Brian Key, who's listed as our school police officer supervisor, has uh, 25 years of service with the Pennsylvania State Police, uh, 17 or 18 of which he was um, in the position of a uh, lieutenant. Um, so he's actually the head guy in charge of a barracks and actually opened up a brand new PSP barracks, Pennsylvania State Police barracks, um, as far as getting all the guys in, the scheduling, everything. I mean, I think that really was a trait we were looking for as far as setting up uh, the police department. Uh, Jonathan Pulowski, um, again, 20, 25 years of uh, law enforcement experience uh, with the municipality of Monroeville, uh, with um, the housing authority prior to that um, as a detective. Um, another great resume, um, but both interviewed very well. Um, and then lastly, Timothy Skoog. Um, has 20, 25 years law enforcement experience with um, the Allegheny County Sheriff as a deputy sheriff um, and a lot of training um, in training. So he's actually a certified firearms instructor. Um, he, he can actually perform a lot of the training uh, needed for these guys. So just a little background information to the public. About the other thing I think that the public would be interested in helping here, Mary, that two of the, uh, Brian and Jonathan have youngsters in Actually, the district. Actually, all three of them. All, all three of them. All three of them, have, three of them have children in the school district. Yeah. That's a plus, I think. Um, personally, us. with the, the phone calls that I made with all three of these gentlemen, uh, just trying to personally vet them myself, I couldn't find anyone really to say anything negative about these three gentlemen. And I am extremely ecstatic at the quality of individuals that have applied to this job. And the other thing it was when after all was said and done, and everybody who sat down with these gentlemen and, and interviewed, first and second round, there was, it was unanimous on the order and the positions for Brian because of his uh, extensive managerial experience to be uh, the head of the staff, and then John uh, second, and then Tim with his training. I mean, these three resumes just shined in those areas, and it was kind of unanimous. There was very little discussion on you know who to put where and the gentlemen already seem to work very well together and have a great respect for each other and have a genuine enthusiasm for leading this project and that was you know a lot of the criticisms that we got you know or how are you guys going to hire a police force we're not we we picked the best guys to be in charge with the most experience and now they're going to take the lead and they're going to work with us but it's going to be their responsibility to interview and hire the police officers because they're the ones that are qualified to do that they're the ones that have 20 to 25 years experience doing just that and uh, I think I'm very happy with with the results and I 100% fully support uh, these recommendations by the administration good any other questions or comments sure I sincerely appreciate all the time that you've put forth Mary Beth I do but I am going to vote no um, to D1A simply because I feel as though a supervisor of law enforcement should have sat in on the interviews to offer a different perspective that people that do not um, have experience in law enforcement offer. So therefore, I will be voting no. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, roll call Bonnie, please. Could you please separate um, D1A from the rest? Oh. Sure. So this will be just for A then? Correct. Okay. Okay, um, do, I, do I need to change my motion? Do I need to modify? <coughs> no, your motion's done. Your motion is okay, passed. We could just do it two times. Correct. Same. Yeah, because all we're just vote voting on. on school police officer employment at this time. Okay, we'll vote on A and then we'll vote on. Okay. okay. So this is for A. Correct. Mr. A Mr. Yeah. Lapsovich. George. George. Yeah, I approve them all. Is that? That was an aye. Aye. Sorry. Mr. Nola. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mr. Steubenbord. 
Aye. Mrs. Warning? Aye. Mr. Williams? No. Mrs. Byrne? No. Mrs. Cerucci? Aye. Thank you very much. Seems like we're going to go to B and C together, or is it? Yes, we'll do B and C together. No. Roll call, please. Mr. N Mr. Nola. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. Mr. Go? Ritter. Aye. Mr. Stevenborg. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mrs. Don't Byrne. Me. Aye. Mrs. Cerucci. Aye. Mr. Lapsovich. Aye. Okay, both pass. Thank you very much. We'll move on to section D personnel agenda items um, that are non-action items for today. Mrs. Crump, please. These will be presented at the August 16th meeting. We have two resignations listed. Um, one is for Janice Samantha. She is the secretary of CSE. She has over 18 years of experience in the district. So we wish her well in her retirement. Um, we also have listed two leaves of absences. Employment, we have a list of substitute teachers. Substitute food service. Under C, we're approving the following as Keystone testing teachers at $25 per hour. These are teachers who have come in over the summer to do Keystone testing to get some of them caught up. We have two volunteers, and then we have on Section B, salary adjustments for non-classified employees. All right, any questions or comments there? Thank you, Mrs. Crump. We'll move on to Section E, Administrative Resolution. Um, and again, we have actually all under, oh no, sorry, we have both an action agenda and a regular agenda. Mr. Short, if you could start with the action agenda, please. Thank you, Mr. Student Board. Um, under item number one, um, we're seeking the board's approval and authorization for the following items. And I will take a few of these and then I'll defer to Mr. Schott. Uh, item number one, the 2016-17 new curriculum and textbooks. These were the items that have been on display here at Central Office, and they were on public review for 30 days. Short. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Short. Uh, item number two, uh, improve the increases in the prices of the applicable a la carte food items for the district's food service department during the 16-17 fiscal year and as depicted in Exhibit B. Item number three, Award the milk bid for the milk services and related food items to Turner Dairy Farms Incorporated for the district's food service department during the 16-17 fiscal year as depicted in Exhibit C. Item number four, approve the district's receipt of federal IDEA Part B pass-through funds through the Allegheny Intermediate Unit Number 3 in the amount of $714,383 and the preliminary budget of expenditures for the 16-17 fiscal year as depicted in Exhibit D. Item number five, approve the settlement of a special education dispute, ODR file number 172671516KE on terms and conditions negotiated by special education special counsel. Item number six, approve the settlement of a special education dispute, ODR file number 172211516AS on terms and conditions negotiated by special education special counsel. Item number seven, we're seeking the purchase of Wonderlick Skills testing software in the amount of $775. Um, this is an interactive simulation software that will allow us to test the accuracy and the knowledge of the software packages of Word and Excel for all the secretaries that we're testing um, for hiring. And then we'll also be able to use them for our current secretaries to identify what skills that we need to provide them for professional development to enhance them. So we'll use it both ways. So move, second. Motion, second. Any questions or comments on the action agenda items for second? Question, uh, quickly, Bill. Um, item number one, the new curriculum, is a lie. These, these materials that we're purchasing are a lie. Correct? Yes. Okay. Well, we get them in time for the teachers to review them before school starts. We already have. Excellent. <laughs> No, actually, how it is, and 
Mr. Lorenzo could answer this probably a little better than I could, is that in terms of what comprises the components that comprise a meal, uh, I'll say, let's use lunch as an example, um, I think it's six or eight ounces of, of milk, or there, there might be a number of options in terms of juice, milk, substitute, but there's just one quantity that, that, makes, that comprises those meal components for that. So it would be one, they would have the opportunity to purchase extra as an extra milk or a juice item for that. But in terms of the actual meal itself, there would be one milk juice component part of the tray. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Mrs. Crump, on the uh, skills testing software that you're getting, how much difference is that going to be from what they have now? I mean, we currently, what we've done before in the past for testing is there's a um, list that gives them a, like a typing test, the standard typing test, and then there's like two Excel questions that have gone with it. Um, what I've used before this in the past is because it does let them do interactive, so it says this is the um, example that we want you to depict and it kind of forwards in, them along with the simulation so it's not just the accuracy but it also identifies how well they know it like if they know shortcuts or what areas that they need to improve on. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, number three. Is that Turner we, who we had last time? Last yeah, year? Correct. So did we bid or do we do those every couple of years? Or no, it's bid every year. They, every they year? come in the lowest and that's what's depicted in Exhibit C. It has the actual bid results. Very good. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
um, you know, this over a million dollars. This is just one year's worth of, right? This is one year's worth. Well, in terms of the, these delinquents, uh, yeah. they don't collect this remaining amount. It's turned over to the law offices. It all of goes to IRS. Yes, yes. So is this like one notice to people that Corporation sends out? Oh no, there's multiple notices um, okay. that are sent out. There's the original tax oh, billing. Yeah, yeah, there's 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 a whole okay. slew of options as well as paying. Okay. And I believe usually towards the end of May or so, there's a, in terms of those folks who have not paid, there's another reminder letter, you know, to, to basically remind them to pay. Okay. You know, or that's it heads into delinquency. And and I'm going to make the assumption that uh, probably among this uh, million plus dollars are some of our top five. Stuff folks that are we're going to advertise in the papers shortly as long as they're not on a payment plan right? right as long as they're not on a payment plan. yeah okay that's it thanks yep. well, and one more item yes item number six and item number six uh, administration will be seeing the approval of the maintenance agreement for managed print services with the wilson group at a base monthly cost of 930 dollars uh, which includes 25,000 black and white pages, 10,000 color pages, plus a cor quarterly overage rate, uh, also uh, applicable for black and white and uh, color uh, pages during the same term. 36-month uh, agreement beginning September 1st uh, and ending August 31st, 2019, and uh, all that information is depicted in Exhibit C. Uh, please note that this agreement replaces the district's current managed print services agreement, which is expiring with Conica Minolta at the same rate. Questions or comments on section eight? Yes. Um, taking a lead from my friend John here. When we come to vote, I'm going to give it a big eye for that number two. I agree. Very good to see Stephanie as president. With Stephanie. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? All right. Seeing none, we'll move on to section F. Do we have any resolutions for board members this evening? Seeing none, we'll open up for comments from residents on non-agenda items. Do we have anyone sign up in advance? Do we have anyone that would like to address the school board? Seeing none, we'll move on to reports. Uh, we will start with uh, Mrs. Crum. We are fastly getting ready for the new school year. We're in the um, process of doing interviews for our secretarial staff. We are also doing interviews for music and art, and we hope to have all of our staffing in place by the 16th. We're still taking names for anybody who wants to substitute um, for teaching, custodial, secretary, or ace. Just give us a call. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Short. Nothing further, thank you. Very good, Mr. Short. Reminder to all of our parents, um, Kindergarten registration is up and running. We continue to have those applications, registrations coming into the district. Strongly encourage those parents out there to please visit us at central office. We do have information posted outside our doors for those parents who may stop in the evening and we are closed if they could fill out that information. Also to our uh, parents and children, within the next two weeks you will be receiving information pertaining to the bus routes and schedules in homerooms. So uh, look forward to uh, a wonderful month of August and can't wait to get the year started. Thank you. Bill, one quick question. Are we at, below, or above on um, kindergarten registration? Kindergarten registration, we are still below. Okay. Uh, has been increasing daily. I did okay. check today. Uh, we are closing in on 195 for And our high, I mean, what, did we, what did we have this year, do you remember? Uh, this past year, I believe, was like 230. Okay. No reason to think that we won't hit that or exceed it. I am hopeful that okay. next month. Very good. All right, we'll move on to board reports. We'll start off with Scotty. I'd just like to send out my thoughts and prayers to the Short family, Mr. Short, on the loss of your father. Uh, uh, he's a great guy, uh, coach baseball and Pitt Karen. Had a lot of great memories down there with him and you. And uh, also here at the school, he will be missed. He always had a smile on his face and always was more concerned about you than he was himself. And i just like to let your family know and you that my thoughts and prayers are with you. Thanks. That's all I have. Thanks, John. 
Sure, I finally finished reading that book, that assignment. We were supposed to read this. I found it, yeah, it takes me a long time because I read slow and I think about things. But this, this book was given to the board by the folks from the library. And it talks about how difficult, how heartbreaking it is for folks who are trying to um, get a job and it's difficult to have the skills you need to, to get a job that, that will pay well. And it, there's sort of a vicious cycle that this author put herself into just to ex experience the taste uh, the trap of poverty. So um, I'm so happy, Mr. Schott, that we're doing well financially here in the Gateway District. But if there's if there's anybody that needs um, um, a book, they can have mine. You're supposed to give it back to the library. Well, it's <laughs> 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 no fines yet. We'll drop it off on the way. That's all I have. Thank you very much, John. Mary Beth. Um, I don't have too much. I, I know everybody is really curious about security, and I, I already stressed that I'm really happy with the leadership that we put in place. Uh, and I also wanted to note that we, we do have a lot of applicants, and I'm pretty confident that we'll have um, the high school, the junior high, the middle schools covered by day one of school. Uh, we still have resumes coming in. Um, I don't know if we'll have all the elementaries covered by the start of school, but I'm pretty confident we will by Christmas break. So the guys that we hired are really excited to move forward. And uh, we'll just continue to keep you posted. And if anybody has any questions, we are always here to answer them. And and thank you. Thank you, Mary Beth. Val? Uh, yes, I just want to extend my sympathy to the short family. I was had the pleasure of having my children go to University Park, where his dad was the principal there, and um, couldn't have had better leadership at University Park, which really brought the name out. And he will be missed. And I'm just very glad that. He was here to see his son take the reins of the school district because I know that's something both his dad and mom wanted all along. And um, if there's anything, hopefully, that you need, the board is here to assist you. you. And also, I saw up on the blacktop the band practicing tonight as we came. They're getting ready for our first big game, Woodland Hills, before school starts. That would be on the 26th, I believe, of August. Um, everybody's in full gear. and. Kids, get ready. Parents, it's coming. it's coming. And that's all I have. Thank you very much, Val. George? Yeah, I had a few things to say, but I forget about them. This is the most important thing in my heart. I'd like to give my heartfelt sympathy to the Short family. Bruce will be long remembered for his presence in Pitkin, Monroeville community, not only as an educator, principal, a friend, and a mentor to many, but in helping guide Gateway to the path it is today. He, he also was a, uh, most of all, he was a husband, father, grandfather, and a true gator. My wife and myself give you our prayers and thoughts go out to you and your family at this sad time. Thank you. Stephanie? I would also like to extend my sympathy to you and your family. Um, I didn't have the personal pleasure of knowing your father, but his legacy certain do, certainly does live on. I've had many people speak very highly of him, and I'm very sorry for your loss. Steve? Yeah, I you know, also want to add my condolences as well. I was, uh, when we were talking about it a little earlier, uh, my dad passed away some time ago, uh, but you know, I think of him probably every other day or so. Uh, big influence in my life is unquestionably your father was not only in your life but in the lives of so many young folks here so my condolences as well to you and your family I'd also like to ask that uh, you contact Mr. Brown um, uh, Scotty and I went around and took a look at some of the baseball fields not too long ago they're in pretty bad shape um, also um, and, and those are issues that seem to repeat themselves and and I don't know why, because it's a, just a matter of scheduling the dragging of the infields to prevent grass growing. And as you go down 48, the last 100, 150 yards of our property is just overgrown. Perhaps he could attend to that as well. Again, we're the front door uh, to our facilities, but it's also pretty much the front door to the community. With, uh, with that, nothing else. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just something real quick. I uh, really appreciate everybody's effort, like on the board and, and all the administration. I know it's summertime, but that's probably a, 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 the busiest time 
getting everything ready and prepared. And I just want to say I thank you, all of you, that all the hard work that everybody's doing. It's really appreciated. Thank you very much. And uh, my last thing is I just wanted to bring people's attention to the, to the board with the pictures over here and how nice they are, especially that one, the little one up in the top there is really nice, I've noticed. Um, that's all I wanted to say. That's very nice pictures up there. It's a picture of Neil Nola for those who can't see I'm not see sure, it. but that one's really nice. Whoever drew that one is. <laughs> Mr. Nola. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm going to nickname that the flower child. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Nola? No, thank you. Thank you. Um, as many have said, again, my condolences, uh, Mr. Short. Um, Bruce started here in 1965. He was here for 35 years and ended as uh, the principal over at UP. So um, again, as, as Val had said, I definitely know it meant a lot to him to, to see you take over as superintendent. So very glad that he, your mother, your sister were able to, to have that moment. So a um, few other things just wanted to touch base on. the. Um, School police, Mary Beth had touched on, so I won't add too much more, but thank you to everyone involved. Um, Trish, um, Bill, Pete, um, Mateo, everyone that was involved did a great job. Um, the safety committee uh, who took part in the, the second interviews um, did a great job, had a lot to bring to the table. Um, and I mean, these guys are, are go-getters. I mean, there's no other way to say it. Uh, they're already getting together almost every day, brainstorming um, how they're gonna bring this program to fruition. Um, I'm, I'm really excited um, for the simple fact that, I mean, we are providing a, a much superior service um, as far as protection and safety to the students, the staff, and the teachers of the Gateway School District. So thank you to everyone on the safety committee uh, for, for bringing this to fruition again. Um, as far as the um, Piper Jaffrey um, presentation went tonight, uh, thank you to everyone on the board for, for listening, even if you got confused with uh, par values and coupon rates, et cetera. Um, but just to kind of break that down again for the, for the press, for the public, um, we're actually lowering our debt service. Um, so in our $70, $71 million budget, we will actually budget for $400,000 less th this upcoming year for debt services. So that allows us to put that money into capital improvements if, if need be, technology if need be, and you know, wherever um, the, the needs of the, the students, um, the, the staff, and the teachers of the school district are, we have that money available. Um, more. The, the second year and, and um, a considerable full, um, amount more in that third year. So hopefully uh, the interest rates stay low over the next uh, four to five weeks and, and we can move forward with that um, big savings. And um, I also do want to thank everyone on the board for, for deciding to go with option B as opposed to floating an additional three million in bonds. Probably not the, the smartest thing to do with all the financial issues going on. So um, other than that, just uh, looking forward to the school year starting. I know the board has put in a lot of work. The teachers have put in a lot of work. Um, the kids probably are not happy to come back, but I know uh, Gateway will be ready for everyone to come back. So with that, I will seek a motion for adjournment. Second. We have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Seeing two, motion passes, meetings adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>